You're listening to the Heart and Hustle podcast. We are your hosts, Evie McLeod and Lindsay Roman. Welcome back to the show, friend. We are so excited to connect, to chat, and to answer some of your questions today. So you submitted to this advice column a few <laughs> questions such as how to tell your clients uh, that you have already booked, that you are pregnant and can't serve them anymore. Um, using giveaways as a growth strategy, does it work or not? Mm. What to say yes and no to when business is popping and what to post on Instagram when you have no fresh content to share. So we're going to dive into all of these today and answer your questions live and on the air. So let's get to it. Hey, hey, I'm Lindsay Roman. And I'm Evie McLeod. And we are family and legacy-focused serial entrepreneurs and the founders of The Heart University, a business education company with a mission to help you thrive in your business and life. Welcome to our Entrepreneur Cocktail Hour, where business and marketing strategies meet faith, real talk, and raw and life-changing conversations. At the end of the day, we are all in this together, figuring out how to navigate the ups and downs, the messy and the beautiful, and everything in between. This is a community where you can come as you are, get inspired, and walk away equipped to build a legacy-filled life. You're listening to the Heart and Hustle Podcast. All right, back to, are we calling it a Q&A episode or an advice column? I don't know. I kind of like the advice column. Ooh, okay. Well, we but- have four juicy questions from our heart family. You submitted them. Yeah, you submitted them for our questionnaire today. Question, no, (laughs) for our advice column today. (laughs) All right, let's get with the program. So the first question comes from Sarah and her question says, pregnant, during fall busy season, how to tell my wedding couples that you've booked already? Yikes. Okay, not yikes. That's, that's, it's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. (laughs) I meant yikes in the sense of like, oh no, we have a problem. What do we do about it? Yeah, exactly. Um, Okay, so Sarah, what I would do is I would personally wait until you're after the 12-week mark. I hate that I even have to say that, but Mm -hmm. I've done that in the past for every pregnancy where I've had wedding clients interfere with kind of around my due date. Mm -hmm. I have never told any of them until after the 12-week mark just to make sure that like the pregnancy is going to continue and um, that you, you don't like... I don't know, say, oh, I'm I'm going to miss it out. And then you have to deal with something that may not happen. Mm-hmm. Um, so that said, again, I, ha- I hate that I even have to say that. Yeah. But um, I, I wait personally until after 12 weeks. And then once that happens, I send each of my... Uh, what am I clients? Call? Yeah, thank you. I send each of my clients. And now this is obviously for wedding photographers, um, but other services could probably a- apply this a little bit. But I send a personal email. Mm-hmm. Well, also not all services would be affected depending on but what you're doing. a lot would if you're in the event space, especially like weddings. Yes, if you're in the events, but, but if you're like a wedding, not a wedding, wow, like a web designer, it may or may not. De- mm-hmm. Again, it depends. Um, however, uh, I will send an individual personal email to every single one of my couples and tell them like basically what's the situation? Like, hey, I'm having a baby and I am due around this time. Um, and then this is kind of some advice before the fact. Make sure in your contract, you have something that yeah. says uh, in the life or dent event that I will not be able to shoot your wedding or attend your event or whatever, um, provide the service, uh, then I will find an associate replacement for you that you agree with and that I can, you know, trust trust and recommend will give you just as good quality as me. So that's what my contract says. Um, and so I personally, when I sent those emails out to my couples, I offered a couple, like I, in advance, before I sent these emails, asked uh, a couple friends to, that I would trust to associate. And I basically offered them as an option, like as multiple options for my couples. That way I was giving them I mean, it's it's beautiful news for you, but for them, it's kind of like worst case scenario, right? Um, and so because I know it's bad news for them, I want to give them as much options as possible to still serve them as much as I can. And I tell them like, hey, I am still with you every step of the way. I'm still going to help you plan. I'm still going to be a part of doing everything that I can in my service that is promised. I just won't be able to be there on the day of. So here are some options that I absolutely trust. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, we can hop on a call with them. And like, I basically offer as much as I can mm-hmm. um, in that event. And then when when I've done that, almost all my couples are like obviously bummed a little bit because you know it's it's bummed mm-hmm. for or it's a bumming situation for them. Yeah. But 
um, they've all understood. And I don't personally, this is a personal choice. You could do whatever you want, but I don't offer an immediate discount but I always, if they want one, like if they ask for one as a response to that email, then I'm willing to give them one. Um, and that's just, again, a personal choice. Uh, that's what I've done in the past. It's worked really well. I don't know. I know I know a lot of photographers in the industry offer in their contract either an associate and a replacement or a refund minus the, the retainer. Mm. Um, I feel like that sucks for the couple though, because they would still lose the retainer. Right. But depending on how much time you spent. Yeah. So that's yeah, just yeah. one other thing I want to like throw out there is I think that's also a very like popular contract yeah. statement in the industry. Um, and I, then, sorry, go ahead. No, I just was thinking the range at which I kind of block off and like the, the only couples that are impacted by it, to me, again, this is kind of a personal choice. I... I think I stopped shooting after around like 32, 33 weeks. I know people who have gotten farther. So again, it's a very personal choice. Mm -hmm. I would just, you know... <laughs> very highly recommend. Very highly recommend. Maybe not. I would also say, especially if it's your first and you don't know how you're going to be feeling. You don't know if you'll go into labor early. Yeah. You don't, you, there's, a, there's a lot of things that you don't know. Um, I would just recommend 32 <laughs> weeks could be a good uh, cutoff time. Mm -hmm. um, and then on the, on the postpartum side... I know not everybody can take, you know, a three-month maternity leave. If you can, do that. Uh, if you can take a two-month maternity leave, do that. Um, however, I would take as long as you can, especially, maybe not even getting back into work, but especially weddings. Um, I know uh, photographers who have like had a wedding, I think like three weeks after birth. And I just please, for the love, <laughs> don't do that to don't your body. Don't do that to your body. <laughs> don't do that to your baby too. Like I just, oh, like, the, your couples will understand. I know that's like such, like that's almost like the hardest thing in the world to like tell our couples like, oh, I don't want to do that. But like, you will be okay. Mm -hmm. You will be okay. And your time with your baby that you will never get back is so well, important. Well, there's also, to me, there's also the whole element of you you don't even know for sure if you have, you know, God forbid, a traumatic like birth experience or surgery or lose a lot of blood. Yeah. There's so many things that like I personally, not just for like, oh yeah, that would be really hard on my body post that close postpartum. Yeah. But I'm also like, what if? Well, and what if, wouldn't you rather love on your couple and serve them better by telling them like six months in advance? Mm -hmm. Like here, let me have someone that I fully trust. Like I associate Versus shot. last, yeah, you literally did. I literally associate You shot, shot a wedding <laughs> on Eloise's due date. Yep, I shot I a wedding. wasn't due for a freaking another month, but that's another story. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, versus having to like last minute after birth, weeks away from their wedding, be like, mm -hmm. I can't shoot it. Mm -hmm. Like that's, just do that in that's, advance. That's a big part for me too, is not only is it hard on your body postpartum, but I just, I don't like the risk factor of, you know, could, yeah. could you be late? Could you be, you know, could you have not given birth at that yeah. point or like just given birth a week before? Like it's, there's too many, you know, yeah. whatever, don't, don't play it. And I, the, this question wasn't specifically asked, but just to say around it, I don't try to family plan and, and not book weddings during a specific time. Because it's so hard. It's so hard. You, infertility or just like trouble getting, getting pregnant. Yeah, getting pregnant. Like there's so many things that could affect that. And so if you like say, hey, I'm not going to book any weddings in this time frame, and then you don't book or the, and then you can't get pregnant in that time frame. Mm -hmm. You just, I would just rather live my life, book, and then if I get pregnant, or you I do, deal with you it. miscarry. There, there's so many, there's so many reasons. There's so many things. It's so hard. It's so unpredictable to absolutely guarantee. So, yeah. something to keep in mind. I think that's about it. Yeah. On that one. All right. Next question is from Natasha. And she said, Do you think giveaways are a good way to grow your Instagram community? I really liked this question because <laughs> I, we, to get these questions, or some of them, I think, uh, I did a poll on the Heart account. Which we usually, I feel like, do it on the Facebook group, but uh, we I just did it. To spice it up. We did it on Instagram this time. Yeah, we did it on Instagram <laughs> for the Heart University's account, and uh, you had done a giveaway the literal day before. Yeah, and I so I'm I I don't know if Natasha was thinking of that when she asked this question, <laughs> but I lulled so hard when it came through. You're like, this feels pointed, very Not like, pointed, but just like, oh, I wonder why in connection doing that. with. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so my immediate thought is yes, absolutely, especially depending on how you do it. Mm -hmm. I don't want to say like, yes, doing giveaways is always the best way and you will always grow your account and people will always come and follow you. There's definitely also not... It depends on what kind of giveaway. Exactly. It depends. Like I, I can tell you from my personal experience, um, I have done, I've partnered with different 
very incredible like photography companies. Like I partnered with Lassie once. Mm -hmm. And I think that giveaway, because I never touched their like ecosystem of followers and like vice versa, I think both of our accounts grew by like 2,000 followers for Mm -hmm. that giveaway. That was by far the biggest growth I've ever seen. But I was also partnering with another account. I was partnering with a very well-known brand. Um, Totally different scenario in that situation for something like like my coaching giveaway that I just did a little bit before this recording, time of recording, which was the giveaway that I just did. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I grew about like 350 followers or something, which is great. And that's fine. And that's fantastic. My goal with that was not to grow. Well, also, that was by yourself. So there, there's mm-hmm. kind of two distinctions of like, you can obviously, anybody can do a giveaway by themselves. Mm-hmm. And it, the main way that that would get to other people is it's, by people sharing it. Right. On which usually that's why there's the requirement of like, share to your stories tag friends like it's right. getting it out to other people whereas if you do a giveaway with other creators mm-hmm. or brands or businesses then you're you know cross-pollinating and trying absolutely. to absolutely. glean each other's followers absolutely so I think bottom line very simple answers yeah it can be a way to get in front of other accounts to you know really showcase what you offer and to get people excited and to bless other people um, you know who might want something for free um, whatever that is something yeah. that's a blessing but I will also say I think that was the first time on my personal account that I had done a giveaway in like four years. Mm -hmm. Um, It's definitely, in my opinion, not one of those things that you want to be doing all of the time because your audience will get burnt out of like having to tag a bunch of people, having to go follow other accounts, having to go, you know, like people, you don't always love that. So I would keep it very um, strategic, very few and far between. um, But it can be an amazing way to get in front of other audiences. You also don't have to do a giveaway for the sole purpose of gaining followers. 100%. Like your your coaching giveaway, the yep. goal was not to grow your following. 100%. Yeah. So. so. All right. Thanks. Keep in mind. <laughs> All right. Question number three comes from Hannah. She says, knowing when to slow down in a season that seems to be exploding with possibility but feels overwhelming, what to say yes to and what to say no to. So, okay. Hannah or anybody else that's listening that resonates <laughs> with what Hannah said. If you are in a season where you're almost like, like being like, wow, this is awesome. I'm growing. I'm seeing growth and I'm seeing explosions of connections and money coming in. And it feels so awesome. But you have kind of the awareness like Hannah does to be like, oh, if I continue on this trajectory, then then not good things go Mm -hmm. in that path. Um, So my advice, if you are gaining momentum and you're getting traction and you want to intentionally slow down and like, be very intentional with what you say no to and what you say yes to. My goal, whether this you're listening to this at the beginning of the year or whenever you're listening to this, I would sit down and actually write out what do you want your life to look like Mm -hmm. and how do you want your business to support that? Because what your life looks like, if you say, okay, in five years, I want to live on a farm with my husband and three kids and I want to have my business be passive and part-time, whatever your picture doesn't have to look anything like that. I'm just, that's just Mm -hmm. in my brain. If that's what it looks like, then what steps are you going to do to make that happen now? Because the the way that you're living your life and business now affects that. Mm -hmm. Um, And that's obviously just one example. But Mm -hmm. if you continue to say yes to things and you say yes to all the speaking gigs and you say yes to all the weddings and you say yes to all the the opportunities, yeah, all the business ideas, like, oh, I want to start this brand and I want to launch this thing and this thing. Oh, I want to do a YouTube channel and a podcast Mm -hmm. and like all the things. That's great. And things can ebb and flow and change. But the more you say yes to, you're saying no to like a thousand things. And so remember that, like make your yeses intentional and that intentional in the way that they are leading toward the life that you want to live. Yeah. And I think the encouragement that I would just tag on to that really quick is recognizing that you might be sacrificing some things that are incredible opportunities, that are incredible, you know, accolades, that could be incredible business ideas, that could make you a ton of money because ultimately it doesn't line up with your your real goals, deep rooted goals for your life. I can tell you from personal experience, I have said no to so many things that would have been incredible. Yeah. And one or two of them, maybe I regret most of them. I'm like, you know what? Nope, not a single, you know, not a single reason that I would have chosen that. And I'm so glad I didn't. So yeah. just know that there will be some, you know, no's that are very difficult because it's an amazing opportunity. It's an amazing, you know, possible revenue stream. It's an amazing accolade or, you know, check on your on your little belt. Like there's so many things that you have in front of you, especially in today's day and age. But just really, like Lindsay said, sit down and make sure you're very clear on your your goal and your trajectory for your life. And every single decision that you make for an opportunity, does it allow or work in alignment with where you're trying to head? Yeah. 
Mm. I feel like our downshift is probably Mm -hmm. honestly one of the biggest examples of this, of us intentionally saying no to more hustle, more profit, which hustle usually, not always, but usually brings profit. Um, And we said no because we didn't want our life to look like it had looked like in the future. And so that was obviously a choice of saying no. 100%. All right, last question is from Emily, and she says, what content to post on socials to stay consistent with posting when you just aren't booking? Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm constantly posting the same two weddings, and I feel kind of weird. Valid. That's so (laughs) relatable, Emily. Wow, okay. Um, So this is obviously, we're going to answer this, you know, from a wedding photographer's perspective, because that's clearly what Emily is. Mm -hmm. Um, But I think this applies to any photographer and then even any business at in general. Basically, it's the the issue of I don't have any like bookings mm-hmm. or, or services that I'm actively doing. And how do I pretend that I have them when I don't? Um, there's a very simple way to answer this question is just to shoot for free. <laughs> it's called styled shoots. It's called giveaway free sessions. That mm-hmm. could be great. Hey, do it in conjunction. Offer a giveaway. Grab your sister. Grab your brother. Mm-hmm. Grab your best friend, grab mm-hmm. your mom's best friend, grab your mom and dad, <laughs> like grab literally every single person that you can physically get in front of your camera, tell them what to wear, because if it's a free shoot, you'll get best curate the heck out of that. Um, <laughs> like literally go on Facebook groups for your small town community mm-hmm. and like be like, would anybody like a free session? Now, again, y- if it's free, you get the choice of yeah. dictating like the entire vibe, the location, everything. Don't let people walk all over you. But Like, get out there and hustle and pretend that you are booked when you're not. Yep, 100%. The thing I will add to that is a great way for wedding photographers to get portfolio and content when you're not getting booked is to second shoot with other wedding photographers. Yeah. Um, Or style shoots. but Or or style shoots, but I would consider that in the free shoot category. Yeah, yeah. Um, So get out there and get content. I know Lindsay and I talk about that all the time. And so you're probably like, oh my gosh, give me a different answer. That is the answer. Yeah. That is the... There's not a magical bean that you can swallow. When you're like, I don't have... What? (laughs) <laughs> okay, I'm gonna try to rein us back in on track. If you're like, I don't have content to post, yeah, go get answer, yourself content. The answer is get content. Yeah, period. Like that's that's what you can obviously post photos of yourself. Post photos like you know we've we've talked about like post personal photos and personal updates and like a, a dump of like here's what my weekend looked like as Do an some entrepreneur. B-roll, like some B roll uh, reels. Yeah, like, talking to you know post some reels like behind the scenes of like shooting a wedding and be like brides here's a tip for you like there's there's things that you can create and content you can create absolutely but if you're wanting to showcase your work in and a- you're and you're waiting just on that wedding booking to come in and then the nine months to pass until that wedding booking happens yeah no get, go out and get content right now that is the answer and so. if you're like oh but i don't know how to set up a styled shoot well we have episodes for you Actually, probably. I don't know if we do. We At probably the time do. of this, maybe, maybe not. We're planning one. Um, it may or may not be out. <laughs> also, yeah. let me just subtly pitch. We have our workshops and we set up absolutely mm. fire style shoots for you at our workshop so that you don't have to do it yourself and you have absolutely killer content. That's true. Attend a workshop. That's true. So many things. So many things that you can do. <laughs> but the point being, hustle your booty off and go get content. Go set up styled shoots. Literally buy a dress from Amazon if you need to. Do that. And yeah. like, you don't have to have all these connections. You can. Yeah. And and we'll talk about that in a styled shoot episode, but just get scrappy 100%. and get that content that you want. All right, friend. Those were your questions for today. As always, come and join our communities one way or another with the Heart uh, University on Instagram or the Heart and Hustle podcast on Facebook. Um, we just love to connect with you and build this community where yeah. we're all growing and learning together. And then you'll be able to submit your questions for the next episode. So... Go enjoy the rest of your day and we'll see you on the next episode.